Hey everyone, welcome to our show, Time Out. I'm your host, Trey Avant, with my co-host, my brother, Noah Avant. Damn! <laughs> this is a two-man webcast that discusses sports and entertainment. Before we begin, don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Boca Raton Tribune on all social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Just look for at Boca Tribune. This show has different segments where we inform you of trending topics in sports and entertainment and offer our thoughts at the end of the show the hot take segment where we'll offer a prediction on one random topic and explain why huddle up it's time for a timeout hey coach how are we going to forget about the instagram man we just made the oh, instagram yeah. man come on man hey look before we before we get started make sure you, about that. Love. you know mm-hmm. our social media manager it was a very handsome guy i think you might see him right now on the camera talking to you he uh, <laughs> yeah, I made it. We made an Instagram. I want to get more connected with you guys. We really want to make sure you understand we really care about y'all. Without y'all, there's no us. We don't do the show because nobody's watching. So we really want to make sure you guys are connected with us and we're talking to you guys. Just having that sense of communication. So make sure you guys get a chance. Follow us at the underscore timeout seven. Again, that's at the underscore timeout seven. And let's have some conversations. All right. Let's start this huddle, baby. We're ready. All right, yes, sir. Let's go. All right, the first round of the NBA playoffs have proven to be an exciting and unpredictable one. But before we actually get into basketball, the Bucks boycotted game five against the Magic after the shooting of Jacob Blake. Blake was shot seven times in the back by police in Kenosha, uh, Wisconsin, after breaking up a fight. Blake was unarmed, and uh, he's now paralyzed from the waist down. He's expected to live but we don't know if his paralysis is permanent or temporary. Uh, your thoughts on the boycott, Noah? Um, I mean, I feel like this this is in a sense what Kyrie was talking about. Kyrie literally was like, we do not need to play basketball right now. He said this. I'm pretty sure he might even say those very same words in the same exact way. And they continue, and the NBA said, no, we want to play. The, the players... Everybody said, we want to play. We're worried about our paychecks. We're worried about this. We're worried about that. And here we are. Now we're sitting out games. You know what I'm saying? Like, I understand. I, I'm grateful. I'm very glad that they are sitting out these games. And I really feel like that everybody for the rest of the day should not play anymore. They should just sit in their rooms. I know they're tired and just not play today. The, the, the Detroit Lions, they didn't play. They didn't practice. I read that. And I've seen that on that TV today. I read it on an article. So, mm-hmm. I mean, like, the whole situation – it's just wild. At this point now, we cannot, and I say we, because I mean Americans, as Americans, like Doc Rivers said, you should be outraged at this. It's not so much of the fact that you can, it's neither here nor there whether he was resisting arrest or not. We all know he wasn't resisting arrest, but we all know the other majority may say otherwise. Mm-hmm. So we know he did not attack the, the officers, did not strike the officers, seven shots. This man was shot seven times. If somebody broke into my house, my apartment right now, and I had to use lethal force, if I shot him seven times, I'm going to jail for murder. These officers got paid leave. This is ridiculous. You know, it's just like how many? T- like, ha- at what point? At what point is it, uh, is enough enough? And you know, I hate to get political, you know, in this in this situation, but it's just like at some point, enough is enough. I mean, Jesus Christ, you shot in the car with three kids in the car. None of them above the age of 10. You know, at some point, at some point, our lawmakers, these public figures, they have to stand up, put their big boy pants on, and handle business. Speak. Because me and you, we can do this all day. We can talk about Breonna Taylor. We can talk about Tamir Rice. We can talk about Trayvon. We can talk about Jacob Blake. We can talk about all these people. But at the end of the day, the people that sign these, they sign these bills that pay these police officers to continue to shoot us until they stand up for what's right. This is just going to continue to happen. Mm-hmm. Even if even if the police did want to you know, just detain him for whatever he did, they followed him back to his car with their guns drawn. His back was turned. So obviously he wasn't a threat and they were following him pretty close, pretty closely behind. They could have easily just tased him if they really wanted to just detain him. I'm sure Buddy would have dropped anyways. 
bro. He, he would be relatively safe and you know, he you know, wouldn't be paralyzed. There there wouldn't be that big of an issue. You know, it'd still be an issue, just not him getting shot seven times in the back and now he's paralyzed from the waist down in front of his kids, you know? It's ridiculous. The man had an alibi. It was a lady out there saying he was out here barbecuing with his family. Exactly. Like, dang, man, we can't we can't walk, we can't wear a hoodie on in the rain, they gonna shoot us. Can't barbecue out in public. They gonna shoot us. They gonna know they gonna call the police on us. Now they shooting us. You know, I, like what is it safe to do? Mm-hmm. Call sports, I guess. They haven't shot any of us yet. So. I guess. But um, what was I was gonna say the. I don't know if the boycotts of the NBA games will continue. I don't know if it's just gonna be like a one game thing, and then they'll go back to playing, or they're just completely done playing. I doubt they're completely done playing. Oh, no, they're not. Yeah, just for the reason the bubble was started in the first place, players do still need to make money, and a lot of players indeed do want to play. The Raptors and the, and the Celtics are they're having discussions about boycotting as well. No decision has been made. I read a report, I believe it was by Shams or Wojnarowski, that said most of the players do want to play. But I think with the Bucks uh, and the Magic pro, uh, boycotting, I believe it's just going to nudge the Raptors and the Celtics because they were the first. The Bucks were the first. Mm-hmm. So it just influences other teams to do the same thing. So I believe the Celtics and the Raptors will most likely protest as well when their series begins. Like I said earlier, I don't know if it's going to continue past game one. I doubt it will. But you never know. You never know. I just, but, um, I just went on uh, Woj's Instagram, I mean, Instagram, Twitter, to just see if he uploaded anything. And it's nothing. They have something from Miss Malika Andrews. She actually uploaded a video of the ball boy putting the balls up from game one. So, I mean, uh, it's neither here nor there at this point. But like I said, I really do feel like most of these teams need to, this needs to say something. As the NBA, I mean, as the NBA at least in comparison to them in the NFL and other sport professional sport leagues, they tend to they tend to do their best thing with social justice and speaking up. So I feel like that's just something that I would do if I was a team. I like, yeah, we're just not gonna play today. But you know, that's neither here nor there. But let's get into some basketball. Yeah, let's get into some basketball. Let's do it. <clears throat> we're gonna start with sweeps first. The Heat swept the Pacers. Any thoughts on that series, Noah? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I had to sweep away the Pacers real quick. The Pacer, the Pacer lovers and the Heat haters away. I had to sweep them away real quick. Mm-hmm. You know, I had to go ahead and get them a body. Yeah, get them a body, poorly. Get them a body. Man, we swept them so oh, go on. Hmm? Go on, go on, go on, go on what you're saying. The thing about it was this. I told people the Miami Heat was really Bleacher Report was nice for giving them one. Mm-hmm. I seen a stat that before they played the Heat, or game uh, against, not against the Heat, TJ Warren shot almost fifty percent against Jimmy and the Miami Heat. That fifty goes down to twenty. Mm. Mm. I try to tell people it is hard to beat a team that is that scrappy on on the defensive end, that aggressive on the board, and that lethal from the three point line. Duncan Robinson is third in the league right now for threes. He he really does this stuff, man. Jimmy Butler is the number one, is the leader right now in steals. I'm telling people, man, you got to stop sleeping on the Miami Heat. You have got to. And I expect the Heat to bring it, bring a little bit more effort next round. Yes. But we're going to talk about that one later. Yeah, we got to. The Pacers fired their head coach. They fired Nate McMillan. And they're looking to go after Mike D'Antoni because this is Mike D'Antoni's last year on his contract with the Rockets. What do you think about that? Do they not like to win? I mean, D'Antoni's a really good coach, but I just don't see how, first of all, they're probably going to move on from Oladipo mm-hmm. oh. no, when he hits free agency. Mm-hmm. So they don't really have a replacement star 
to run yep. that offense. Yes, they do. Well, who? Sabonis? TJ Warren. No. Um, TJ Warren. TJ no. Warren's going to be that guy, I'm telling you. So, TJ Warren, pretty honestly, I feel like he's a trade piece. How old is he? Do you know how old he is? TJ Warren? He looks I, like he's probably about 20. Late 20s, early 30s? I don't know. But it's just the way that Tony likes to run an offense. Like, Harden is the perfect player for that. Steve Nash is the perfect player. He's not going to run his offense through TJ Warren. But Warren's 26. Yeah, but they're not going to, I don't think they're going to run their offense through TJ Warren for the long haul. And Sabonis is a better player than him right now. Even though he didn't play in the he didn't play in the bubble, he's had a better overall season. This TJ Warren is just now really starting to show up in the bubble right now. Like he had a great he had a good year. He did have a good year, but he didn't really explode until he got to the bubble. The thing with but see the bubble was such a random circumstance. And for him to play as well as he did in the bubble, I'd imagine when they're actually in front of their fans in Indiana. That they're gonna, he's gonna play even better. Or this would be a more consistent thing. You know what I'm saying? Like he yeah. wasn't bad at NC State. He wasn't bad at he wasn't bad at Phoenix. You know, now he's in Indiana, and I really feel like this this little beef that he had with Jimmy definitely helped him out. It's overblown though. It definitely was overblown. Jimmy said to him, "So like, I don't have, I don't care about beating. I, I like." That's not his issue. That was not his number one thing going in the bubble was beating T.J. Warren four games to none. His, his, his goal is to get some jewelry on his fingers. And, you know, like, at, at that point, it's, it just it, 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 like, I do feel like the uh, Pacers did not give me – um, what's my man's name? M- M- what's his, how, M- how you say his last name? Who you talking about, Michael Brogdon? No, the coach. Uh, M- M- oh, Nate McMillan. Nate McMillan. 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 That's his last name, McMillan. I do feel like they did not give McMillan a fair shake. You you lose a team. You lost without all of your players. He didn't have a bonus. I think what last year he didn't have Oladipo. Yeah. So I'm like, Oladipo no, wasn't at 100 in this series. So like, is it really fair to fire somebody like that? And he's not a bad coach. Yeah, he's a good coach. He's a great coach. I mean, he just he played the Heat. Yeah. If he would have played anybody else, it would have been worse. So, I mean, it's, it, is it is what it is. I don't, but I do feel like he won't have an issue finding another job. Mm-hmm. I was just watching ESPN, and they were saying that they could see him coaching. With, if they were them, they were they were thinking in between the two teams of the Pacers and the Nets. Mm-hmm. And I could see him, I could see him coaching in Brooklyn with KD and Kyrie Irving. Yeah. I mean, which one would you take? If I was Nate McMillan, yeah, between the Pacers and Brooklyn, no, between the between Brooklyn and the Pelicans, I would choose the Nets because they're more you know built to win now. But at the same time, you got to think if if the Nets are not winning, and he has a shorter leash compared to if he goes to the Pelicans, where they have a little bit more yeah. leeway. Yeah, you know, because they're not really there yet. The Nets next year are they're expected to be there. You know, I got something to say about the Nets later on. You sure do. You sure do. <laughs> Barring a miraculous comeback by the Magic, the Heat are expected to play the Bucks in the semis. Um, the Celtics swept the Sixers. What do you think about that series? Not surprising. I told you when Ben Simmons went down, what was going to happen to him. Mm-hmm. And, and at the end of the day, I really don't feel like the Celtics get enough credit for being how powerful they are on offense. Like, I feel bad for Toronto. Because they don't have the guards to keep up with that offense. They don't. Pascal Siakam's going to do his thing. He's going to be – Pascal's going to be Pascal. Mark Casal and Serge, they're going to be Serge and Mark. They're going to do their thing. But you're not going to stop Jason Tatum with OG and Obi. You're not going to stop Kimball Walker with Kyle Lowry. That's comical. Like, that's hilarious if people really think that's going to happen. Kimba's got to have an off series for him to even come close to stopping him. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's gonna be a. 
I feel like that series is either going to be really quick or really long. It's either going to go four games or it's going to go six or seven. Yeah. It won't go five. I and know. they might not even go six. It's either going to go four or seven. I'm going to stick with that. We're going to get to that one later. We're going to get to that series later. All right. But the Sixers would have had a better chance if Ben Simmons was there. Because the Sixers are, on paper, a really, really talented team. Mm-hmm. It's just they don't play well together. You know what they're missing? A head coach now. That and a guy by the name of Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler would have been extremely helpful. But what I was thinking, before Ben Simmons started playing for the Sixers, back when he was in the NBA, but you know his rookie year when he didn't really play? Yeah. And Joel Embiid was pretty much just leading the uh, Sixers. Yeah. They weren't a very good team. Even though they had Joel Embiid and Joel Embiid was balling. They sucked. They were really bad. And then the moment Ben Simmons started playing, they became really good. Mm-hmm. That's how you know this is a guard league. Or even though they have the best center in the league, they weren't able to win with him. Mm-hmm. Now, I would say Joel Embiid is a better player than Ben Simmons. Absolutely. But Ben Simmons is just more important to that team. Mm-hmm. But them to win... For them to win, for them to win, he's a little bit more important. I cannot say that. I cannot say that. I mean, in this instant, yes, just because they just did not have the guard play to keep up with Boston. Mm -hmm. But let's be real. Ben Simmons, we're not going to sit up here and pretend Ben Simmons is Steph Curry or somebody like that. Yes, he had a very critical critical effect on their wins. But I'm going to ask you this. If you're a GM... Are you if you're Philly's GM right now? Are you trading Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid? Either. Why? Because, because they, I'm telling you right now, if they not trade one of them or get an additional piece that can complement them, that team right there is going to be the LA Clippers with Lo- the Lob City LA Clippers. Well, if they were to trade anybody, well, okay, this is what I think they're going to do. They're going to hire a head coach. They have to, obviously. And they're gonna roll with Simmons and Embiid for one more year to see how that coach, you know, develops Ben Simmons and his shot and see if he can get more effort out of Joel Embiid. Cause Joel Embiid, while he is very talented, he doesn't always work that hard. Um they're gonna trade, they're probably gonna trade, try to trade Harris, Tobias Harris or Al Horford. Or Josh Richardson. They're gone. They got to surround and be and Simmons with more shooters. Because leave because getting rid of J.J. Redick, that was a huge mistake. That was a huge mistake. Doofy for mistake. Like, that, both, neither, like of hmm? and neither of them are shooters. And B and Simmons, neither of them are shooters. So you surround them with shooters. I feel like their, their plan probably was that they'd have Al Horford, who has a jump, has a three ball. And Josh Richardson, whose numbers were just about identical to Jimmy Butler's, yeah. I feel like they thought, but but Richardson being a better shooter, it uh kind of helped fill a void where JJ's gone mm-hmm. with him at Horford. But uh, yeah, I had seen a report, I read an article by Bleacher Report, basically talking about what Brett Brown was thinking. Mm-hmm. He said that. The team that they built this year was extremely big, which it was. Mm-hmm. The point guard was 6'10. Huge. Their shooting guard was 6'6. Six, six. Their small four was 6'8. Their power four was 6'10. And their center was seven feet. Those are the, those are big players. But what he realized there was no spacing. He was upset with Ben Simmons not shooting the ball. Cause they talked about it and they worked out it all summer. They said Wait, you know that game where Ben Simmons made a three and mm-hmm. everybody got really excited? Brett Brown said, I want him to shoot one three-pointer a game, at least one three-pointer a game. And Ben Simmons was irked by his comment and decided not to shoot a three for the next 25 games. And in Joel Embiid, he, I guess he was having weight issues. Because Brett Brown was like, hey, he's just, he's, he, Brett Brown said, we're going to get fired if Joel is not in shape. 
And then what you said before, they thought uh, they thought Josh Richardson was basically Jimmy Butler light, which I mean he kind of is a little bit, but yeah, not really. And Al Horford, they signed Al Horford because they know Joel and B is hurt pretty often. <laughs> Bro, I so mean, look, there's a lot going on behind the scenes. I'm gonna say this about about this, and we can go on to the um the uh, talking about other series. But you gotta understand, man. You Ben Simmons, that's petty. Like I'm telling you something for the betterment of the team, and you're not doing it. Like, bro, I'm telling you as a GM, Ben Simmons would have been gone. I'm t- I would have made it no. I'd have put it on ESPN. Hell, give me a thirty, give me thirty minutes. Let's talk about it. Uh Ben Simmons for sale. Ben Simmons for sale. Get him up out of here. Who wants them? You can have them. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's talk turkey. Because you're not trying to do anything that's going to help the team. Like if you're that selfish, you're that hurt, your pride is that fragile. You cannot take. I want you to shoot one three a game. It hurts your feelings, so you don't shoot threes for the last twenty five for the next twenty five games. Cool. We'll see you on another jersey. Good luck. Yeah, I had him out of here. You still, he still has trade value. That's the thing. A lot of trade value. These guys are getting older, and Ben Simmons cannot shoot that good. So he's already on the lower end of it. At least Joe, Joel and B, he's a top five big man. Mm-hmm. Ben Simmons is not top five in his position. That point guard? He is not a top five point guard. Yeah, you're probably right. I mean, when you think, we'll, eh, we'll, we'll talk about that one later. We'll, he could be a top 10, but he yeah. really is a top 15 point guard. You 6'10", mm-hmm. dribbling the ball, you can't shoot. Mm-hmm. You'll get your big tail in the paint, grab some rebounds. Pass the ball to Josh Richardson. He the point guard now. You, 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 you sit in the, you sit in the paint. You sit right next to Joel on the other block and grab some daggone rebound. Yeah, it just, it just didn't work out for them. I think they're gonna run it back next year. See what happens. If it, if it doesn't work, one of them is gonna trade it. One of them is gonna trade it. And Brett Brown was having issues with Jimmy Butler, but that's neither here or there. Uh, the Raptors swept the Nets. Any thoughts on that series? I mean, duh. It's the Raptors. Yeah. It's the Raptors in the Nets. The Nets went out their whole team. They basically went to Orlando with their bench. Some guys from the G League. Pretty much. <laughs> Say, hey, good luck. <laughs> I mean, they, they played pretty hard. They played hard, though. They, they did. They played they well. Played they even beat the Bucks in one game, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they beat the Bucks. I mean, shoot. If that team with no Kyrie, no – no DeAndre Jordan, no KD, you know, just Karis LeVert. I'm with it. Yeah, they're gonna be they're gonna be really good next year. Mm-hmm. As we said earlier, as we alluded to earlier, the Raptors and Celtics will face off in the semifinals. Any thoughts on that potential matchup? Um, it's gonna be an interesting matchup. I'm excited to see what that's how that's gonna go. Like I said, four to seven. I mean four four to seven, and when I say four to seven. I mean four or seven. I don't. I shouldn't even say four to seven. I four or seven. I don't see a five or six game series. Both of these teams are really competitive. They got a lot of guys on their team that are hungry for this for that championship. So I'd imagine I could see. I imagine they're really gonna play their hearts out. Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be a good series to watch. That's probably mm-hmm. gonna be between that and uh, Heat Bucks. Um, matchup. It's probably gonna be my set. That's what those two probably gonna be my favorite coming out of the East series was. The um the Raptors. I don't think they're gonna get swept. I believe they'll make it seven games. They're gonna lose. The Celtics are just way too talented. Way too talented. And they're healthy too. <laughs> That's so, right. The Raptors. I don't think they're gonna get swept, but I do think they'll make it close. I believe every game is gonna be a close game with the Raptors losing in seven. The Celtics going on to the conference finals, but uh, let's let's take a look at the series that are still going on. As we said, the Bucks are leading the Magic three games to one. What are your thoughts on this series, Noah? Um, the next game is the last. <laughs> I mean, like I want them to continue to play. Mm-hmm. Lord knows if the Magic pulled out another game out there, but just to wear them out. Just hey, you, just take them six. Just take them six. If you take them six. That's fine. I'm good with it. I ain't even asking for a seven game series. I'm just asking for six. You know, but 
I don't want them to go out like this. Not like this. Not this. It's too early. I seen that when the Magic were on the court today, I seen Aaron Gordon on the court. Aaron Gordon hasn't played all season. So Aaron Gordon, I believe, is like the second leading score. Mm-hmm. So no. he can make it. He can make it. He's not second. He's a second or first. I thought he was the third scoring option. I don't know. I think he, I think he might be second. I think he might, he might be second because Nikola is one, I believe. Yeah, but I, the Magic are gonna lose the series. Hopefully, I agree with you. Hopefully, they could push it to six. But yeah, next game, next game is the last game. Yeah, Magic are losing okay. five. But we have a commercial break, I believe. Yes, we do. We do have a commercial break. All right, all right, guys. We have a commercial by Hyzer Marketing. Uh, stay tuned. everyone you are watching time out with the avant bros if you enjoyed the show please click the share button to share the stream with all your friends also don't forget to like follow and subscribe to the bubble return tribune on all social media platforms youtube facebook instagram and twitter just look for at broker tribune you can also follow the show on instagram at the underscore timeout seven definitely do that. let's get back into things Lakers are leading the Blazers three games to one. What are your thoughts on this series, Noah? Dang, man. Like, I'm mad my hot take not going to go through, man. Like, I'm really upset about that. Because I was like, I mean, you know, it's, 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 I like LeBron. You know what I'm saying? I like LeBron. I really do like LeBron. I truly do. But my hot take was, that would have been crazy if I would have predicted that. But, yeah, it's, it's over for them. You you can't you can't go down 3-1 on LeBron. Like, no, that's, that's not how that mean. works. And expect to win. I mean, you're. Your hot take could still come true. It's not going to come true, but it could. In the East, maybe, but not in the West. Not in the East, not, not in the East either. But you're, you're bugging. Okay, we're going to see. We're going to see. We're going to see. It, it's just, well, Dame's not playing. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's over for them. It's curtains for them. It's, it's wraps. LeBron's going to LeBron's gonna have, but LeBron might not even play. LeBron's going to be like, you know what? Uh, you know, there's I, I, no I, reason for me to do it. Don't do that. Hey, better play. <laughs> it don't matter. The Lakers are gonna win regardless. The, the Blazers just don't have the firepower anymore. Yeah. Damian Lillard was their whole offense. They live by the three. I mean, honestly, that's the thing. Like the last game I was watching, they shot terrible. They were getting like they they you cannot shoot a bunch of threes and miss and expect to win. That's the one thing about being a three-point shooting team that a lot of people tend to miss. When you are a three-point shooting team, you live and die on that line. Dame has an off night. CJ's not going to carry that load. Melo, I love Carmelo. But he's not carrying that load anymore either. So that's 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 your top three scorers right there. Who else are you going to depend on to score 30 to 40 points to give y'all that boost? When you have LeBron going to average, LeBron's going to give you 20 and stuff, absolutely stuff his stat line. What are you going to do with Anthony Davis, who's going to give you 25 and thir- or 30 and absolutely stuff his stat line? What are you going to do with that? How can you stop that? Again, 
Do you? I will, I told this to somebody. I said, you know how how dangerous the Lakers could really truly be. They could run a lineup of. Um, who did I say would be the point? I said LeBron could be the point. Kuz could be the two. Oh my god! Uh, yeah, crazy. right. Because that's how big they are. They're huge. AD or somebody else at the three and four, and then Javale at the five. Not that they would do anything stupid like that. Yeah. But I'm just saying, that's how dangerous this team can be. They could literally swap. They might put Kuz at the three, um, AD at the four, JaVale at the five, LeBron at the point, and then uh, Danny Green or Contavious call. Oh, God. I'm going I'm to call him Casper. I'm going to say our Casper at the two. So, I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that team can go either way. That team is huge, and there's – Pretty talented. Yeah. CJ's not keeping up with that, bro. He's not. Nurkic isn't either. Next. <laughs> but speaking of jump shooting teams who live and die by the three, the Rockets and the Thunder are tied at two games apiece. Mm. What are your thoughts on that series? Bro, I'm telling you, Chris Paul is hungry, man. Mm-hmm. That is a hungry man. I love what he's doing with HBCUs. I'm right, I'm doing my, my best Chris Paul impersonation, ripping my school, Crosby Hall, all my JOMC students. You know, it's just like Chris Paul is playing. Like, he's really playing his hardest. He, and I'm so proud of this. I And Shy, SGA is really hooping. Like, Dennis Schroeder. <laughs> Dennis Schroeder is really out here cooking. Like, that team – that Thunder team, I, I said this to somebody, and they laughed. But it's true. The OKC Thunder are the Miami Heat of the West Coast. They're yeah. an exceptional team and get this much credit for it. Yeah. Like, they're literally playing the league's leading scorer, and they have it 2-2. Two, two. Mm-hmm. That's tough. That is tough. And, I mean, I you could write it off as no Russell Westbrook because he is questionable. He's questionable for this game. But – how how the Thunder have been playing, man. I just – it's going to be interesting to see what this is. But I will say this. Next game, this game right here determines who's going to win the next game because I don't see it going seven. It's not going to go seven. Oh, that's, in- that's interesting. That's an interesting take. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I seen a Bleacher Report article where they said they were talking about Dark Horse uh, final match finals matchups, mm-hmm. and one of them was Heat and Thunder. Wow, really? Yeah. They were like, it's extremely unlikely, but that would be an interesting series to see. Yeah. Because uh, they're practically the same team. The Heat shoot better. Yeah, it's just like the Heat got Jimmy Butler, and then Thunder got Chris Paul. It's just and neither were expected to be in those destinations. And here like, they are. Exactly. <laughs> And the Heat are in the semifinals, and the Thunder are going toe to toe with the Rockets, for the one, of the best, one of the best scoring teams in the league. So it's crazy. Yeah, and both have the potential to get squashed like a bug in the semifinals. So you know it is definitely very comparable. Definitely, definitely. Russell Westbrook is expected to play uh, Game Five. Mm-hmm. Well, not expected, but it's questionable to play. Right. He's going to game time decision. He's going to check on his hamstring. See how it feels and whatnot. Right. The Jazz are leading the Nuggets three games to two. What are your thoughts on that series? Jamal Murray is a grown man. Mm-hmm. He's playing like an absolute beast. I think they said I, I saw I saw something today on ESPN. It was like he missed twenty two shots out of like fifty seven total over the past couple nights with this many turnovers. That's that's crazy. We scored 92 points in the last two games. 92 points last two games with no turnovers. None. That's crazy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. He, he, needs, he needs more credit. He played for the Nuggets. Yeah. I the mean, Nuggets, I, the, the Nuggets, Nuggets are, were getting blown out last game, though. They were getting blown out, but then they came back and won. I just hate that – Um that they give Jokic all of his credit. Like, he does not have any supporting cast. Like, Jamal Murray is a buck. And he's been a buck for a minute, but now he's really letting it show. 
I feel like this bubble experience is really letting a lot of these guys that have been doing this for some time really start to get that shine that they deserve. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I see so many people, people, people be like, oh, Nikola Jokic is the Nuggets point guard. Well, he is a point center, and the offense kind of runs through him. Do not disrespect Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray bucket. is a bucket. Bucket. Big bucket. What? Oh. So, but Donovan Mitchell doing his thing too. Spider Mitch, he a hey, he averaged. I think when I looked at his average today, I think he was averaging something crazy. It was like thirty seven points or something like. I'm like, what? Yeah, him and Jamal going at it. <laughs> they going at it. He's open. He's a he's a, he's a bucket. He remind he, he remind me of a, a young D Wade. Hey, I was I was just saying that, and, and I honestly. I like that comparison because it's so spot on. Like how he plays, he's like a he's like a young D way with a better jumper, and that's crazy. Yeah, that's dangerous. That's dangerous as heck. I had seen a um a scouting report when he was coming out of Louisville. They said Donovan Mitchell is Dwayne Wade without the jump shot, but he also doesn't have like the defense. I'm sorry, he's Dwayne Wade with the jump shot. But he doesn't have the defense that Dwayne That's Wade has. Because Dwayne Wade was a lot more consistent playing defense. While he, while Donovan has the tools, he has long arms, he's athletic. He can play defense. He just doesn't. I don't want to try, say try as hard as D Wade because I'm sure he tries really hard. It's just, I guess he he still needs to like get in, like learn defense a little bit more, like learn screens and whatnot. I feel like there's also just a difference in eras. You know, yeah. D-Way really was come came into the league right off of the 90s, and that was a very physical era of basketball, whereas Donovan Mitchell now is in an era where offense basically runs everything. You know, so um, I will say this about Donovan Mitchell. His defense does have the potential to be better. Yeah. And I feel like um, if they got a, maybe a stronger point guard to mm-hmm. coincide with him, that could help him out a lot too. And yeah, he's an old Mike Conley. Cause that's not cutting the cheese. That's just not gonna cut it for him. That's not gonna cut it for him at all. Yeah. So the Clippers are leading the Mavericks three games to two. Mm-hmm. Paul George has been playing horrible, but last game scored thirty five points. Hey Snoop, what are your thoughts on the series, Noah? Um, with the Clippers and Mavs, Luca. Luca Porzingis. Honestly, poor, I have never thought I would be saying this. Mm-hmm. This might be crazy, but I would have never thought Porzingis would make this much of a difference in the series for them. Mm-hmm. You know, like I've I've never really been a Porzingis guy. You know, maybe just because he played for the Knicks, then he played for the Mavericks. And if you're a Heat fan, you know how we feel about the Mavericks. So it's like it's just one of those things. But geez, Louise, Luca Doncic, and and Porzingis, they're taking the, the best team in the NBA on paper, possibly the seven games. Mm-hmm. Like if they win, if they win tomorrow, I honestly don't know who's going to win that series. Yeah, it's. I truly do not know. I think the Clippers are going to win the series in the end, but like you said, if the Mavericks win the next game. Who knows? Who knows? Like, bro, you gotta think about it. Like, like, bro, Porzingis. Porzingis has been balling. Look, I mean, he, 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 he didn't play. He didn't play last game. Yeah, but the games he has been playing, he's been very effective. Even the game they lost at the beginning of the series, that was you said it yourself. That should have been game they won. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, can you really truly say the Clippers will win? I mean, I'm going to stick by the Clippers because I think they're just, we've, we've seen more out of them. Mm-hmm. But with the bubble and there's no home court, it's just very unpredictable. I do. And Luca has, Luca has been playing out of his mind. So it's mm-hmm. hard to say. I do. The Timberwolves got the first pick in the draft. Warriors got second and Hornets got third. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen in this draft? Um, 
if I'm the if I'm the Timberwolves, mm-hmm. I'm keeping my pick. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anthony Edwards and D Lo. Yeah. With Cat. Yeah. Is dangerous. Very but dangerous. Anthony Edwards is a grown man. I he single handedly brought Georgia back to relevant. Put Georgia on the map for basketball. He mm-hmm. brought them to relevancy. And that young man has a gift. I really wish we could have seen him in March Madness. Yeah, I was I was excited to see because he was projected to be the first pick in the draft pretty much the whole season. So it, it would have been interesting to see what he would have did in March Madness going up against some of the top tier teams Absolutely. in the nation. That team with Anthony Edwards and D'Lo and Cat is going to be very dangerous on offense. Defense, not so much. He plays pretty good defense. No, he doesn't. He, he, I, that's one of his. He has the physical ability to play defense, just the way he's built. But, look, but he doesn't try. You cannot teach size, Trey. That's true. You can't teach that. But Cat is seven play. foot. He hasn't played defense. He, he's going to be fine defensively. Trust me. If the if they have anybody out there that can teach some defense to him, they're good. The only issue would be is just developing him. I feel like that's going to be their only concern. I'm not worried about him playing. It's just him developing into what we what they need him to be. Mm-hmm. That's my thing. Wiggins didn't develop that much. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, that that, that kind of that, that backfired heavily. Very heavily. And then I got the I got James Wiseman going to the Warriors. Obviously, they need a big man. Draymond <laughs> Green is not going to cut it. And um. I think Lamelo's probably going to end up going to the to the Hornets, and I will get season tickets. Yeah, I believe James Wiseman's going to the Warriors as well. They need a big man. They have pretty much every hole filled. They're going to be extremely dangerous next season. I don't. If they trade their pick, who knows what's what's going to happen? But if they keep it, Wiseman Hornets, I do believe they're getting Lamelo Ball. There's no one else they could pick because after the third pick. The quality of the draft just declines like steeply. So the Hornets have to get Lamelo. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays with Devontae Graham. I don't yeah. know. They have, they have Terry Rozier, yeah. but Terry Rozier, Terry Rozier is most likely going to come off the bench with the six man. It's going to be interesting to see how they put Lamelo if he runs point or if he runs the two. Because he is bigger than Devontae. He's also a better passer than Devontae, but he's not a better shooter than Devontae. Nah, I was about to say. About to say. Boy, Devontae. So they, they might run Devontae at the two, though, simply because he's a better shooter. But it's it's hard to say. I know Jordan probably wants to select him just so he could talk to LeVar. Probably. You know, LeVar be talking a lot. Yeah. So. Yo, so let's talk about. I know this. We really don't. We've never talked about this. Let's talk about some wrestling. Can we talk about some summer? Did we even talk about SummerSlam this week? Yeah, yeah. We're gonna talk about WWE. SummerSlam was last Sunday. Mm-hmm. The main event of the night was the Fiend Brian. I mean, Bray Wyatt mm-hmm. face off against the Monster Braun Strowman in a false count anywhere match for the WWE Universal Championship. Wyatt won the match, but the biggest storyline of the match. Wasn't the match itself. It was the return of Roman Reigns, who took a break from wrestling because he had leukemia. You know, he's at a high risk of contracting complications with COVID-19. He took out both Wyatt and Strowman. And he's expect he's gonna take both of them on a triple threat match at payback for the Universal Championship. Thoughts? Dude, Roman Reigns, I actually gotta watch a couple couple minutes of it. He came in there spearing people like he was trying out for a football team. Jesus. This guy came. Boom. You, he's like, Oprah, you get a spear. You get a spear. You get a spear. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Crazy. I'm straight. I, this is textbook tackle. I was like, look, if I was a body my coach, I'm sure like, y'all know how Roman Reigns came in and speared everybody. That's how you tackle. You just keep your head up. Like, he was going crazy. Like, but it was a couple other good fights. Um, Randy Orton and Drew McIntyre. What do you think about that one? Yeah, it was um a very interesting matchup. You know, Randy Orton he hit Drew McIntyre with a couple punt kicks. 
tried to end Drew McIntyre's career. Tried to end his career. Keith Lee at Raw, he made his Raw debut to confront Orton about what he did to Drew McIntyre. Even though, you know, Drew McIntyre did win, he was pretty damaged. Keith Lee challenged Orton to a match, but Lee lost by disqualification because Drew McIntyre came out and whatnot, interrupted the match. So what, what do you think about Keith Lee's debut? I mean, hey, look. I love the WWE sport uh, storyline writers. I really feel like he's going to have a very interesting role in in in, uh, in the near future. Randy Orton is a legend. He's definitely a Hall of Famer. Uh, if anybody says different, they are just too young to obviously watch sport, watch wrestling. So uh, that's that's just all it is to it. Randy Orton, that match played his life like he really put it all out there, and he just could he just didn't have it in the tank to finish it. And at the end of the day, you can't blame him. Like you, you remember the punt kicks. The punt kick was really all he needed. The RKO was just like a cherry on top of the icing on the cake, whichever floats your boat. <clears throat> now that little punt kick is like cookies. It doesn't bother him. So it's like yeah, this is one of those things. Yeah, I seen people were upset with Keith Lee. Keith Lee, his uh, his entrance, like the theme song was different. Everything was just kind of thrown off with Keith Lee. And it mm-hmm. really upset a lot of fans because he's like one of the top stars at NXT. And so when he finally made his Raw debut, it kind of, it was strange to see how they did him. But I believe Keith Lee's gonna have a nice run. Nice feud with Randy Orton. Mm-hmm. And I believe Keith Lee's gonna, he's gonna fight for the WWE Championship pretty soon. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. So uh, you just stepped out of bounds a little bit. So it only makes sense that we talk about our new segment, Out of Bounds, baby. Let's get it. Yes, sir. First on the agenda, my personal favorite, the Call of Duty reveal was today. <laughs> Man, did you look at that? I did see it. I seen it. And it looks like every other Call of Duty. You a hater. You are such a hater. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I don't play Call of Duty. Call of Duty. That Call of Duty took 10 years to make. They literally said it was 10 years in the making. They used the dude, the little, the little KGB dude. I can't say his name. It's Russian. It's hard. I don't know how to say it. But dude was dude was really was out there speaking. And it was like it's weird because what he was saying resonates with today. I don't know. I think the new Call of Duty is gonna be crazy. You think so? Why you say that? Think so because, bro, they bringing back Frank Woods. It's like all of your original guys from Black Ops, the first one, not the futuristic robot Halo versions of Call of Duty. They're in this game. Like this is the Vietnam Call of Duty that every real Call of Duty fan had been begging for for years. This is finally the game that we have. I'm with it. I at this point, they just need to shut up and get just take my money. Just take it. Take my debit card. It won't decline. Just take it, please. Day, day one? Day one purchase? I'm buying it tomorrow. I'm Ooh. pre-ordering it tomorrow. Ooh. The, the, the ultimate edition, because I love Call of Duty. <laughs> you played the NBA uh, 2K21 demo? I don't like to have trash around me. Yeah, I heard it was really bad. Uh, a 2K, 2K is just a trash basketball game. It is a disgrace to the game of basketball. So you're going to play live? If, well, you they, play live. if EA Sports today said we're dropping e- NBA Live two, 2021, I'm buying it. I played two. I played NBA Live 19 the other day with Joel Embiid on the cover. You think I care about some 2K? No. 2K is the cheesiest game in the world. Like no. So you I'm like gonna... Live more? Yeah. What What do you like about Live more than 2K? Personally. I just feel like NBA Live flows more, like a lot more realistic. Like being a basketball player, I know how offense is supposed to run. I know where places like where these guys are supposed to be. I know that given is the NBA set, it's probably gonna be a lot more complex and different. But in 2K, I've literally seen centers just sit on the three-point line like this. Why is a set why is Rudy Gobert on the three-point line? Why? <laughs> you you can't you can't make that make sense. Why are you there? Move. They don't move. They don't cut. 
at least in NBA Live, they move, they move without the ball, they cut, they set screens, off ball screens, they do a lot. The whole presentation of it, even the my player, my player, they call it the one. When they play, it's like they're on like whenever you have a highlight, it's like somebody's on IG Live. And it's like somebody's recording it as it's happening. Like it's a lot more that goes into it. Even the details of the shoes. The sneakers look like the real sneakers. Like 2K, my issue with my biggest issue with 2K is that 2K will throw a cinematic effect on anything, some slow mo on the camera, maybe a little play with a little filters or two, and say, "Here we go, baby, brand new game." We done added this, that, and the third. All the thing they did was give Jimmy Butler a better lineup, and that's it. That, that that's not cutting the cheese for me. I'm good. I will not be spending that money for the PS5. I mean, for 2K21 on my PS5. Nor will I be spending the money from my PS4. I feel you. I feel you. I did pre-order Madden though. Madden okay. comes up with me. Okay. Okay. DC fandom was this week. They shared. They shared a bunch of trailers, a bunch of reveals, and whatnot. The new Wonder Woman 84, 1984 trailer came out. Revealed the film's villain, Cheetah, Wonder Woman's arch enemy. Yeah, I'm going to lie, the CGI, it didn't look too good to me. It didn't look too good. Did you see the trailer, though? I'm going to be real. The thing with DC movies is that they just don't. They're, like you said, the CGI. The CGI is always the issue with their movies. Even with, uh, what's that, man? Shazam. Shazam, that was the issue with Shazam. Mm-hmm. It's just, the comic books are better. The movies suck. Marvel? The comic books don't suck. They're not that bad, but they also aren't that better. They aren't better than DC, but the movies are better. The thing with it is it just goes down to it at the end of the day. We're spoiled because our our idea of a superhero movie, if it's not Endgame, The Dark Knight, it's if it's not something on those lines, or I'm some not type of, some type of Spider Man movie. Hmm. Or some type of Spider Man movie. The last ones, the last couple ones, Far From Home and Homecoming. Yeah, yeah those are good movies. Those are good movies. Yeah, those are pretty good. But even then, I, 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 I purposely left those up because I felt like the CGI in Endgame was outstanding. I mean, if you look at the breakdown, the actual phase process of how they did it, it's, it's great. They really mm-hmm. took their time on that. I like that. But I did see the Black Adam because The Rock is in that. You know, so I got to see that. You know, that's my guy. That's my dog, so I gotta go see him. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna be good. Yeah, they haven't started filming it. It's just a little bit of concept art, but it did look nice. It did look interesting. You seen the Batman trailer? The Batman trailer looked really nice. You know, with Robert Pattinson. I don't know how that's gonna work, Robert Pattinson. I'm not, like, bro. I'm sorry. I just look at him as a vampire. I was like, he's gonna be this vampire dude that's crazy. Yeah. Old girl named I Bella. agree. I was, I was kind of, yeah, it was kind of weird seeing that too. But when I seen the trailer. It looked pretty good. He was he was he was Batman. He's beating people up. It looked violent. It looked good. Wow. Uh, the, the Shaz- Shazam two is now Shazam: Fury of Gods. The Flash. The director showed the concept art. It looked That's pretty gonna good. good. That's going to be good. good. They've been it's playing it. Like, yeah, it looked like it, it's going to adapt the, the Flashpoint storyline where he resets the DC universe and whatnot. The Suicide Squad, James Gunn, he revealed the characters in the movie. <coughs> Most of them are going to die, I promise you that. That's pretty much what he said. They're pretty much all going to die. Not all of them, but, you know, Harley Quinn going to be okay. You know, you know. The main ones are going to live. I got you. Yeah. Zack Snyder revealed his Just League trailer. It looks outstanding. Looks amazing. Suicide Squad, the Kill the Justice League, the video game. Mm-hmm. The trailer looks good. He plays Harley Quinn, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, King Shark. Looks really good. Gotham Knights, that video game, a trailer came out and a gameplay came out. You can play as Robin, Red Hood, Nightwing, and Batgirl. You can't play as Batman because Batman is dead in that game. They're going to play against the Court of Owls. Oh, it's awesome. Go back on the Suicide Squad trailer. Brainiac has taken over the Justice League's mind. So the Suicide Squad got to go up against the Flash and Superman, Wonder Woman. So it's interesting to see how they do that. Wow. That's actually, that's, that's weird. that reminds me of uh, Justice League Doom. It's an old movie. It's a, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've seen the movie. Yeah. That, that's what that reminded me of, personally. Mm-hmm. 
I understand. It's about that time, folks. It's hot take time. Hot, hot, hot. Yes, hot. sir. It's too hot to handle. My hot take of today is Kyler Murphy, I'm oh, sorry, Kyler Murray and the Arizona Cardinals will make the playoffs this year. I believe Kyler Murray will take that second season leap as many other young QBs have done in the past. He won offensive rookie of the year and now he has more weapons. DeAndre Hawkins, arguably the best receiver in the league. He's now Murray's top target. Ken Drake was phenomenal for the Cardinals last season after his trade from the Dolphins. Murray still has Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, and Andy Isabella for his other receiving targets. Patrick Peterson and Chandler Jones are still on defense, so you know they'll provide a steady hand. And rookie Isaiah Simmons is expected to make a big impact as well. I believe they'll get the wild card spot. That's fair. Um, mine is the Brooklyn Nets are going to be a top three team in the, in the East next year. We talked a little bit about it earlier. At the end of the day, the Nets really has got a short end of the stick this year. Um, they got hit with injury bug real bad off the off the bat with KD recovering from his Achilles injury, Kyrie being hurt, and then DeAndre Hop- uh, DeAndre Hopkins, DeAndre Jordan catching COVID going into the bubble. They were also without Spencer Dinwiddie for some time too. They really just got the short end of the stick this year. They couldn't even sign Michael Beasley because of COVID. So I mean, a lot of the bad things happened to the Nets this year. But I do feel like. They're gonna add some sugar into their uh some sugar into this Kool-Aid. They um they sh- I've heard a lot of rumors about Brad Bill being a potential net at some point. I don't know how likely that is, but I do feel like if they were able to bring Brad Bill to Brooklyn, it'd be definitely something to watch. They're absolutely be probably the best offensive team in the NBA, hands down. You know, with, with KD with the potential to average 30 and Brad Bill, who did average 30. Um but yeah, honestly, I, that's that's what I got. Yeah, yeah, I, I I wholeheartedly agree. All right, guys, that's it for today's show. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Boca Raton News, and follow the show on Instagram at the underscore timeout seven, and like us on Facebook at Boca Raton Tribune. Follow me on my personal Twitter at Trey on three Noah. Make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at Who Builds Arcs. And you can follow me on Instagram at ArcBuilderNoah as well. Mm-hmm. Timeout airs every Thursday at 7 p.m. As always, this is the Avant Bros signing off.